Welcome to Chapter 7. Uh, chapter 7 will take a look at different ways that you may analyze a current business or perhaps if you're taking a look at purchasing an existing uh, business. So this chapter looks at what the critical success factors are and we'll also take a look at uh, some tools and techniques to be able to analyze the operations of the of companies uh, to determine how successful they are in uh, meeting those critical success factors. Financial success is uh, important and, and, and essential for, for survival, but they're not the only uh, critical success factor. There are other uh, success factors that successful companies need to need to ensure their long-term success in the business uh, environment. So we'll take a look at those critical success factors uh, in this chapter. So in this chapter, we'll take a look at the, the critical success factors and, and uh, talk about ways to measure them to determine how successful a company is. We'll take a look at um, an analysis technique called a SWOT analysis, and uh, we'll learn a little bit how to use that. Um, we'll take a look at uh, some basic tools to help us analyze a business as well as the competitive marketplace. Uh, we'll take a look at some methods for analyzing financial position, and then we'll conclude the chapter, as usual, with some trends uh, that are going on in, uh, uh, in, in business with respect to analyzing a business. So let's take a look at the critical success factors uh, to determine whether a business is truly successful. Um, historically, uh, businesses have been deemed successful if they make money, at least uh, over the short term. This is a much more short term uh, view. And there are other uh, factors that are important to uh, keep in mind to ensure the long term success of any business. So let's take a look at the five um, key critical success factors uh, which will help you to determine whether your business is successful. The first, of course, is uh, achieving financial performance. So financial performance is obviously uh, uh, paramount to ensuring the long-term success of our business. And this can be measured in a number of different ways. Typically, it's measured in terms of profit. It perhaps measured in terms of return on investment, uh, the net worth of the uh, business, as well as uh, ensuring that a good return is made on our shareholders' investment. Uh, so we must ensure that uh, our shareholders are happy and, and earning a uh, return to compensate them for the risk and to provide the, an incentive to keep their investment with our, with our company. We also may look at uh, cash flow uh, because uh, with profits, profits don't necessarily mean cash flow and we need to ensure that we have sufficient cash flow on hand to be able to make our bills as they come due. When, uh, when you uh, take Introduction to Business 2, you will learn a little bit more about racial analysis and, and different techniques used to uh, measure and uh, predict financial performance uh, going forward. A second critical success factor is meeting and exceeding customers' needs. Companies must be sensitive to the needs of uh, customers and also understand how those needs are changing and address those needs in a proactive uh, fa fashion. Uh, companies need to go beyond just meeting needs but exceeding customer expectations uh, because uh, if we don't do that we certainly um, we may lose them to our competition because our competition will also be looking at different ways to meet and exceed customer needs. It, it sometimes it's very difficult to determine how happy our customers are uh, so it's not easily calculated uh, sometimes we might measure whether we're truly successful at uh, exceeding our customer needs by the number of complaints in the organization that we receive. How many times do they go above our salesperson's head to the manager uh, with a complaint or an issue? And sometimes um, it can be measured on 
uh, how how easy it is for customers to deal with us how pro how good are we at resolving those customer issues or customer uh, complaints uh, sometimes businesses will measure how well they're doing in meeting uh, customer needs by uh, some sort of loyalty index uh, the, the the top five banks currently are using something that's called a net promoter score and what that is is um, uh, independent third-party companies do surveys of customers of the different chartered banks and uh, calculate a net promoter score and what that means is uh, the number of customers that will recommend the financial institution L subtract subtract the number of customers that would definitely not recommend and we get something that's called a net promoter score and so the uh, banks will compare how how loyal their customers are through this index and uh, compare to each other. The third critical success factor is providing value. Uh, so providing value to customers uh, often means providing quality products at a reasonable price. So customers are very demanding, they want value for uh, their their money and uh, they will pay a price that uh, gives them a value uh, for their money so we may be able to uh, determine how much value through a gap analysis uh, by talking to our customers surveying our customers uh, to determine whether we are truly providing value to them the fourth critical success factor is encouraging creativity and innovation within our organization. Uh, so this involves entrepreneurial thinking, uh, under creating new uh, innovative products, uh, being very creative with uh, our processes, uh, lean production techniques, uh, to be one step ahead of our uh, competition. So it's essential that we don't become stagnant in the, 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 the services or the products that we provide, but we're very creative and innovative to keep ahead of our competition. The last and, and perhaps the most important success factor is gaining employee commitment. Um, employees need to be empowered to act. They need to be motivated to meet the corporate objectives uh, in each of the other four factors. Without that employee commitment, uh, we probably will not be successful in any of the other critical success factors. One way to measure this is through employee surveys. Um, are, are our employees going above and beyond what is expected of them? How are they feeling? Um, uh, are they there just because of the job and the paycheck or their other intrinsic rewards that keep them motivated. We'll take a look at uh, some ways to uh, motivate uh, and uh, our employees in uh, part three of uh, this course. It's really important to remember that all of the critical success factors are uh, related. Um, they all affect one another. Uh, if we're not providing value, we're not meeting our customer needs, which will affect our financial uh, performance, which may affect how um, much money we can spend on creating new products, and of course will have an effect on how employees feel towards the organization. So the, each of these critical six fac success factors are, are interconnected and uh, related. When taking a look at uh, the success of our company, we also need to consider some stakeholder analysis. So the stakeholder, there are many stakeholders in a, a business and we need to determine how successful we are in meeting their, um, their needs. The three most obvious stakeholder groups are employees, as we just talked about above, um, the shareholders, which um, um, we've talked about in terms of meeting their financial performance uh, expectations uh, as well as our customers. So those three groups are represented in those five 
critical success factors. But there's also a wider world out there that must be considered. Um, you know, for instance, the government, uh, special inter interest groups, our community that we're working on, our suppliers. So uh, all of those groups interact with our business and uh, keep it operating. So to have successful to be a successful business, we need to ensure that those relationships with the expanded or extended uh, stakeholders are being met. Our business doesn't uh, operate within a uh, vacuum, uh, so we need to consider them in every decision that uh, our business makes. A very common tool used to help us analyze our business is something that's called uh, SWOT analysis. And SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So essentially it's a tool used to compare the opportunities and threats in the external environments to the strengths and weaknesses in the internal environment of our business. And uh, then with uh, our understanding of the uh, key stakeholders, we can an analyze whether our vision or mission or, or strategy of our corporation, our business, is uh, uh, makes sense in uh, the context of those strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So let's take a look at some of the s steps involved in undertaking a SWOT analysis. The first step in undertaking a SWOT analysis is to understand where we've been. Uh, so what that means is taking a look at our past strategy and our past structure uh, and perhaps analyzing some of the critical events in the history of our company. For instance, a new product launch or a new mission or, or some new um, uh, 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 critical development in our company and how successful was that. Um, it's important to uh, understand uh, how we've operated in the past so we can learn and be more proactive and uh, if we've made some mistakes in the past, understand those so that we can prevent them from happening going forward. The SWOT analysis then helps us understand where we are now. We can take a look at the strengths and weaknesses of our company. Uh, as well, we can take a look at uh, the external environment and understand some of the opportunities and some of the threats. So we'll take a closer look at these uh, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats in the next few slides. So when taking a look at the internal environment, so this is the analysis of our internal company, of our company ourself, and we must take a look at where are our strengths? What are we good at? Uh, is our strengths our, um, um, uh, the diversity of our product lines? Is it our, our market share? Is it that we seem to have strengths in marketing and advertising? Are our employees strengths? Do we have good efficiency? Are we good at production? Are we good at providing quality? Do we have consistent quality? Um, do, what is one of our strengths our uh, acknowledgement of our brand or recognition of the brand in the, uh, the market? Uh, do we have good controls in the organization? Have we been financial, financially uh, uh, successful? So, Taking a, a detailed analysis of our internal strengths will help us understand um, our business because we certainly want to uh, ensure that those strengths remain going forward. At the same time, we must understand where are some of our challenges, our weaknesses are in the market. Is it that we've got a narrow product line? Is our quality not up to par? Uh, are our marketing strategies not effective? Are our customers not loyal? Uh, are we not as efficient as we should be? Do we invest enough in research and development? Is our perhaps our financial performance is lagging those of our uh, competitors? Uh, what, what about our employees? Are our employees happy? Are they contributing to our company? Are they empowered? to uh, make decisions? Do we have the proper information systems to help us make decisions in our organization? 
So there's a lot of things that we need to analyze to understand our own internal weaknesses so that we can uh, improve upon those to be successful going forward. At the same time, we must understand the external environment. What is going on in the world around us? So these uh, uh, external fa factors really are, are specific to each company, and there's different ways to analyze the uh, external uh, environment. But some of the things to take a look at in terms of opportunities that might, might exist are um, uh, taking a look at our competition. Uh, is our, are there opportunities in the market because our competitors are lagging or not responding to customer needs? Is there an opportunity to expand our market share? Is there an opportunity uh, to meet some new need in the market that hasn't been fulfilled? Um, are there opportunities to purchase other companies and, and, and expand our business that way? Are there opportunities to uh, diversify? Are there opportunities to um, uh, vertically integrate um, uh, and, and increase our efficiency? Uh, so it's really important to understand the world, our competitive environment, what's going on. And from that understanding, we hopefully will see some opportunities that we should pursue. It's also important to understand the threats in the external environments in which we operate. Are there changing uh, labor um, uh, legislation? Uh, are there changing uh, import uh, uh, regulations or government regulations? Uh, are there upcoming pollution controls? Is that a, a something that we need to be uh, aware of? Perhaps uh, uh, there's a decrease in barriers to entry, so we might see some increased competition going forward. What's happening in the global market? Is foreign competition increasing? Uh, are we losing uh, sales to um, those companies that are now doing business in Canada? Uh, what's happening with the workforce? Is uh, there some significant increases in wages, labor legislation, demographic factors. One of the things happening now is a large brain drain in that uh, many of the baby boomers are retiring. So uh, that may be a threat to our uh, market. Have we opened ourselves up to the threat of takeover uh, by other corporations? Uh, customer needs and tastes changing. Those could be potential threats. So it's important to understand the, the, the threats uh, as well to help us identify the, which strategies we should be pursuing uh, going forward. One of the tools that is very common to help us understand the competitive environment is uh, Michael Porter's uh, Five Forces model. Michael Porter is a professor at Harvard University, and uh, he introduced a uh, model called Porter's Five Forces uh, that is often used by companies in better understanding the competitive environment uh, around them. Be sure to uh, watch the video link that I've posted. Uh, it is a video, um, it is actually an interview with uh, Michael Porter on his uh, Five Forces model, so it can help uh, illustrate the concepts learned in this chapter. So Michael Porter's Five Forces model, uh, as I said, is a, a tool to help us understand the the competitive environment and takes a look at five factors. It takes a look at the risk of uh, new entry by potential competitors, the degree of rivalry among uh, the existing competitors in a market, the uh, bargaining power of both buyers and sellers, and the threat of substitute products. So let's take a little bit of a closer look at each of those five um, uh, five points to take a look at when doing a, uh, uh, an analysis of the competition. 
So these are the five forces uh, in understanding uh, the competitive environment in any uh, industry that Michael Porter uses. So let's take a look at each one. The first is understanding uh, substitute products. So substitute products are products that customers can uh, switch to instead of buying your product. If there's a, a large number of substitute products, they can perhaps easily switch to that substitute product. Uh, which provides very similar or the same uh, um, uh, value and suits the needs of the customer. So in understanding uh, substitute products, it's important to take a look at uh, price difference between existing products out there, any differences in quality, um, any difference in uh, performance, uh, and uh, understand the costs of switching. Sometimes there are some significant costs for uh, customers to switch from one supplier to another, for instance. Uh, and you also have to take a look at buyers' willingness to, uh, to substitute. Uh, so if you're taking a look at the uh, iPad industry, um, you could take a look at perhaps subs substitute products being the Android versions. Um, or, or, or the different versions that are being introduced of, of iPads. So there's more and more uh, substitute uh, products and fairly easy for uh, customers to um, switch to one product or one brand from, from another. The second uh, key factor to look at in, in analyzing the competition in any in industry is the uh, is buyers. So understand how many buyers. What is the size of the market? What are some of the switching costs to use another uh, supplier or another product? Uh, how much uh, uh, how much emphasis do uh, buyers place on brand? loyalty. If, if some of your competition has very strong brand loyalty, it may be a very difficult uh, market to uh, get into. Um, so it's important to understand uh, uh, buyers. It's also uh, important to understand the nature of suppliers in uh, a market. Uh, is there a large number of suppliers? As the number of suppliers decreases in an industry, the power they have to negotiate uh, is a lot higher. Uh, what is the size of suppliers? Are there very, uh, do do a, a, a select number of suppliers dominate the market? Um, how expensive is it? How easy is it for buyers to switch from one supplier uh, to another? How easily can we substitute one supplier uh, for another? So important to understand the power of suppliers when uh, analyzing the competitiveness of any industry. Taking a look at uh, the threat of new competition is uh, very important as well. Uh, so we need to have an understanding whether there are some barriers to entry into that market. For instance, uh, there are some huge barriers to entry in getting into the airline business. Uh, huge, huge capital costs. Uh, there may be some huge legal regulatory issues, competition bureau issues. Uh, may be difficult to um, uh, break into uh, some of the... Um, uh, markets because of the uh, um, uh, brand loyalty of, uh, of uh, customers to some of our competitors. So we really need to take a look at how, um, how easy or difficult it is to actually enter that industry when, when taking a look at the competitiveness of any industry. And the last thing to take a look at is competitive rivalry. Are there a large number of competitors? Is there fierce competition? Uh, are some of the uh, uh, some of the businesses in that market very significant in terms of size? For instance, Walmart is very large in uh, you know the department store and, and even grocery store markets now. How do they differentiate their uh, product or service offerings? Um, what are some of the costs for a buyer to go to the competition? How easy is it to get out of that? that uh, industry. Uh, so really important to have an uh, analysis or an understanding of those five forces 
uh, to be able to understand the competitive nature of any industry uh, uh, under Mark Michael Porter's model. So once you've identified the strengths and weaknesses of the uh, company, as well as the external opportunities and threats that it might be uh, faced with and understand the competitive environment, um, uh, we need to consider really what these findings mean. Um, after doing that work, we don't just set it aside and, and, and go forward. We, um, we re really need to balance our strengths and weaknesses against those opportunities and threats. Uh, to first see what our competencies and, and perhaps competitive advantages are, and then to determine whether our vision and miss, mission statement are appropriate, and um, uh, really whether our over -strated, overall strategy is appropriate for our organizations. So um, uh, one of the one of the things we need to do is take a look at our core competencies. So these are our, our strengths. Um, what can we do? What can our company do uh, very well? Starbucks core competency, uh, for example, is making great coffee. Uh, what's the distinctive advantage? What can we do better than our competition? Is it the uh, is it the for Starbucks? Is it the coffee itself, or is it the environment that they they create? Um, Starbucks competitive advantage, uh, which is um, um, the ability to offer not just a, a great cup of coffee, but a distinct, distinctive um, um, uh, experience, a place to go and relax and uh, enjoy a cup of coffee with, uh, with friends. Must understand the competitive advantage. What, what is that thing that gives customers value that sets us apart from our competition? And not only do we have a competitive advantage today, but is that competitive advantage sustainable? So does, will it exist over the long run? A sustainable competitive advantage cannot be easily duplicated by our competitors. So it's important to understand if we have a sustainable competitive advantage and what that exactly is. And we can do that through an understanding of our SWOT analysis. So now that we understand what our, our competitive position is and what our competitive advantage is, we can better understand whether our vision, whether our vision, vision statement and mission statement are appropriate. Uh, so at the most basic level, a vision statement outlines why the company exists and where it's going in the future. So it's kind of a, a clear picture of what the future direction is of our company. Um, and most companies will have a vision statement that all employees should be used to, uh, uh, should understand. So it's the, the direction of the company. It's that uh, vision, a future state of the company that uh, can guide us in our day-to-day -day decisions and inspire our employees to get there. Uh, the, the mission statement is also used to differentiate one uh, uh, business or one organization from its competition. And it further refines the uh, direction it, it, you know, that's articulated in the vision statement uh, and, and really answers some of the questions like, uh, who are we and what business uh, are we in? So it's a clear, concise articulation of how the company intends to achieve its uh, vision and how we're different from the competition uh, and what are key, um, uh, key, what are the key things that will define success for our, our company. So once we've done our SWOT analysis and, and we've taken a look at the corporate level strategy and, and, and determined and understand the, both the vision and, and, and the mission statement of the company, uh, the next step is to analyze the business level strategies. And that uh, really defines how the company has decided to compete in the markets that it's chosen to uh, deal in and really describes its uh, competitive position, what it wants to do in terms of defining a distinct uh, competitive advantage in the market. For instance, um, uh, our competitive advantage might be based on uh, cost leadership, such as Superstore, providing a, 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 a lower cost than the competition can do. Perhaps in its uh, d being able to set our product apart in terms of quality or experience or service, 
uh, or um, convenience for customers, uh, such as Tim Hortons strategy, or do we have a um, market niche strategy where we're focusing on a very defined target market and doing an excellent job at satisfying the needs and wants of a very restricted or perhaps a niche market uh, rather than pursuing a general market? So do we do a better job in um, uh, target marketing our customers and really meeting their needs? Perhaps we are our business level strategy might be to focus at uh, providing a better quality better quality product, better quality experience uh, to our, uh, our customers. So important to um, understand what our business level strategies are and making sure that all our decisions, um, whether they be marketing or production or operations and control, are consistent with uh, our business level strategies in the organization. Uh, so it wouldn't make sense for our superstore to be advertising as a great shopping experience. Perhaps not. Um, so uh, making sure that uh, our message to consumers is consistent and everything we do builds is focused on building that uh, competitive advantage. Um, we're not going to spend a lot of time on uh, the analysis of financial statements. That is covered more in depth in uh, IB2, or if you take some courses in managerial accounting or financial accounting, you'll start to really understand the importance of having a clear understanding of the financial performance of our business and, and doing some analysis of the financial statements, perhaps ratio analysis, cost-benefit analysis, um, uh, projecting future performance using financial statements. Uh, so that's beyond the scope of, of this course, but you certainly is certainly a critical part of uh, understanding and, and being able to project future performance uh, through an analysis of the uh, financial statement. So more to come in uh, IB2. So going forward, uh, it's important to consider uh, some, some current trends that are happening in the market when analyzing your business. For instance, uh, customer needs are, are constantly changing. Not only are they demanding quality products at reasonable prices, but more and more today customers are um, demanding that uh, these products be safe and that our companies are acting in ethical manner. Uh, so, um, uh, there, uh, as well, there's there's an extended uh, stakeholder group. Not only is it just the employees, the customers, and our, our investors, uh, but the it's important to satisfy um, wider stakeholder groups, uh, such as the uh, government, and and making sure we're good corporate citizens to the communities in, in which we w work. So, um, so important to understand the the effects of those. Uh, stakeholder groups and the needs of those sta stakeholder groups uh, going forward. Certainly a lot more emphasis on um, uh, today on uh, uh, environmental stewardship or responsibility to the environment through uh, cutting pollution, you know, uh, uh, recycling programs, uh, and this will continue to be a main emphasis that uh, uh, we need to consider when analyzing a business going forward. Um, as, and always remember that businesses do, do not operate in I isolation. We ha do have a responsibility to uh, society. Uh, today, more and more, um, our, our customers are, are demanding that we um, uh, use fair practices, uh, do not use child labor, for instance. Those seem to be important issues for Canadians today and um, when doing business internationally to use the same ethics as you would uh, when doing business in, in Canada, uh, as well as um, um, our society is looking for companies to support the communities in, in which, we, which we live, which we work. Uh, so that is something that's important to keep in mind when analyzing uh, your business and, and perhaps the future of your business. So that concludes chapter uh, seven. Uh, so hopefully you have a better understanding of what it may take to analyze either your existing business or a future business opportunity that you might be looking at exploring.